Welcome to the next in our series of Bible readings from Luke's Gospel uh, for this time. I do hope that today you'll gain some encouragement as well as challenge from the Word of God, because the Word of God is living and active, sharper than a double-edged sword. And it is here to speak to you today. Let's read together from Luke's Gospel, uh, chapter 5, verse 17. That's Luke's Gospel, chapter 5, verse 17. <clears throat> One day Jesus was teaching, and Pharisees and teachers of the law were sitting there. They had come from every village of Galilee and from Judea and Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was with Jesus to heal those who were ill. Some men came carrying a paralyzed man on a mat and tried to take him into the house to lay him before Jesus. When they could not find a way to do this because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and lowered him on his mat through the tiles into the middle of the crowd, right in front of Jesus. When Jesus saw their faith, he said, friend, your sins are forgiven. The Pharisees and the teachers of the law began thinking to themselves, Who is this fellow who speaks blasphemy? Who can forgive sins but God alone? Jesus knew what they were thinking and asked, Why are you thinking these things in your hearts? Which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Get up and walk. But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. So he said to the, to the paralyzed man, I tell you, get up. Take your mat and go home. Immediately he stood up in front of them, took what he had been lying on and went home praising God. Everyone was amazed and gave praise to God. They were filled with awe and said, we've seen remarkable things today. It's quite an amazing scene, really. Of course, the roofs were different than uh, we have roofs today. It'd be quite hard to get through my roof to drop somebody in front of me. But they were able to do it. it. must have been a quite astonishing situation, just landing straight in front of Jesus. Last Sunday, in our Sunday service, which was on Facebook and Instagram, my wife uh, shared a, a model that she was making for the kids. And uh, she was actually making it um, for this story, which turns up today in our daily readings. So she asked the children in our churches, to make a junk model. We used to do a lot of junk modeling when my kids were little. A junk model of the house. And we happen to have some old Playmobil figures. So she made, oh, she made some figures like this uh, for, to let down into the roof of the house for Jesus to heal. There you go. So if you've got kids, you may want to make something, do something creative, get some old bits of cardboard, some sellotape, some old toys, uh, have a dinosaur playing the part of Jesus, if that's not too blasphemous, and uh, just act out the stories. Some people even call it godly play when we uh, use toys to tell Bible stories. And make something, get alongside, get down with the kids. And uh, that's a bit of fun. But what we have here is we have Jesus saying to the friends, he said, when he saw their faith, he proclaimed forgiveness and healed. And we have an opportunity here today to pray for people who don't maybe believe at all. They can't pray because they have no one to pray to. And we have a ministry in this time to pray for other people. I was on the phone today to a doctor about my own health conditions, nothing to do with corona, coronavirus. And I was just able just to, to share with him. Again, there are other people that we can pray for, perhaps uh, workmen, uh, maybe who come keeping social distancing to do work, uh, people that we were on the phone to. Don't be frightened, don't be shy to offer prayer for somebody. Just say, would you mind if I prayed for you now on the phone? It's amazing at this time how many people are open to that. So, we have a ministry, even if we're stuck inside, to pray for people who can't pray, won't pray for themselves. And the second thing is just this uh, contrast. He forgives the guy's sins. And then in order to prove his authority to forgive sins, he, um, he, he, he heals the guy. <clears throat> and there's this balance, this tension between physical and spiritual need, 
physical and spiritual solutions from Jesus, which is the most important. He forgives the guy's sins first because that's the most important need facing uh, an eternity with God or without God. We need our sins to be forgiven and he heals. Now, there's a balance there between spiritual and physical needs, and they're both important. Some Christians, particularly if they're evangelistic, want to go out and share the gospel. Other Christians, if they're practically minded, want to go and volunteer. And I do encourage you to think about volunteering. Uh, most local boroughs have departments uh, administering, coordinating volunteers. And of course, the NHS are still looking for volunteers, although they've been swamped uh, really well by the numbers of people who are volunteering to help. So, you know, if you're well, if there's nothing wrong with you physically, call up the local council, uh, volunteer to help in whatever capacity you're needed. But I also want to just address this question of death, because as believers, we're not frightened to die. But in this time, there will be deaths. Yesterday, I had to visit a young woman, a mother of a three-year-old, his husband died yesterday in hospital. He had health complications and caught the coronavirus. It was heartbreaking. Um, I could only speak to her from six feet away at her door and um, couldn't give her a hug, couldn't comfort her in that way. And she was obviously devastated, crying from another country or her family were abroad. And we may encounter more of that. But I want to just address the question of death. I was listening to an interview with a, a thinker, so-called, who said that with the, the numbers of deaths it's going to be, we need to rethink our attitude to death. We need to treat death as a natural part of life, um, just something, a fact of existence, and, and just treat it in that way, a kind of matter-of-fact, common-sense sort of way. As if we were animals, just part of the animal kingdom, uh, crawling off to die in a bush or a hole somewhere when we know our time is up. But we are not just animals. We share a lot in common with animals, but we are made in the image of God, and we have a connection with God as our creator and our savior. Death is not part of God's original good creation. Death is not normal. Death is abnormal. Death is, the Bible says, the last enemy. It is an enemy. It is not something that we can get used to and accept. Yes, it can bring relief from the physical suffering, but death itself is not a good thing. It is not part of what God intended. His plan is for eternal life. And death is an interruption in that. Painful sometimes. We can rant and rail against death. It is not our friend. As believers, we can go peacefully into the night. We don't need to echo the poet Dylan Thomas who said, do not go gentle into that good night. He was an atheist. He had no hope. So he couldn't envisage going peacefully or gently into that good night. We can go peacefully and gently into that good night. But for those who are suffering, those who are dying, we need to have compassion, but also action. It's a tension in the Christian life. Because of our confidence in Christ, we can go gentle, peaceful, rejoicing into that good night. We know that we will be with our Savior. But death itself is not our friend. It is an enemy. It is not part of God's nation, nature. It is abnormal. So I encourage you to pray for your friends, relatives, neighbors. Care for them. A man called Tom Holland wrote a book called Dominion just recently. A historian, not a Christian, in which he said the reason why uh, in the West particularly we have a concern for the weak and the dying is because of the Christian gospel. That concern was not there in 
pagan Rome and Greece, they used to leave the dying to die. They used to put children onto rubbish tips to die, uh, newborn children. It was the concern for the weak which Christ brought to the West and to the whole world. It is a counter-cultural example that we have to follow. So I encourage you, be a carer. If you want to be cared for, be a carer. If you want to be loved, be a lover. If you want to be a friend, if you want to have a friend, if you want to be friended, be a friend to others. This is an opportunity. We're going to be facing hard times, an enemy. But in faith in Christ, we can triumph over that enemy and we can serve others in this context. Let's pray together. Father, we're facing an enemy, but we know that in your son Jesus, you have defeated that enemy on the cross as your son rose from the dead. So we pray that you will strengthen us to fight against the enemy. We pray for all those in the health services, the emergency services, that you will bless them and give them the energy that they need to serve and to heal. We pray, oh God, for ourselves, that you'll help us to reach out and to pray for those who have no faith, to bring them before you in faith, as these friends did with their friend. We pray all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. If this talk seemed a little less uh, polished than previously, a little bit more angry, forgive me. Um, the encounter I had yesterday touched me deeply and I'm praying for that young mother and for her child and offering continuing support as our members of the church. That's what we're going to have to do in the near future. Just remember that on Sunday, the service will be on, will be live from King's Cross Baptist Church, 11 o'clock in the morning. Remember the clocks go forward so you lose an hour of sleep. Breathe will continue to be online at 7 o'clock on Thursdays. These, however, will only be on Facebook Live. It will be shared later on on Instagram and other platforms, but the live will only be on Facebook. We have small groups in the church. If you want to be part of a small group, let me know. And if you have any prayer requests, send them in. Our intercessors team will be meeting throughout this crisis. God bless you. God be with you. God strengthen your arm for the fight. Amen.